2017, the insurance committee, uh, it's 2.05, and we had to reboot the computer, so we're running just a tad bit late. But um, we'll ask you to um, stand up, and we're going to do the invocation by Commissioner Goddard and do the pledge by Sheriff DeLoach. Please bow our heads. Lord, thank you so much for this time we share together, Lord. Thank you for such wonderful weather, Lord. We, we are just so thankful where we live and the people we live with, Lord. And we just ask that you help us to pass our blessings on to others, Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Uh, committee members, we're going to do a roll call. Tony, will you do our roll call? Or Ann, do you have our Marjorie? One of you. <laughs> Let the record show that um, Brenda is sitting in for Miss Myers today, and Kenny Downs is sitting in for Tim Smith today. And we already knew that Clay Davis was appointed by um, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker to, I was going to say Larry Pritchett. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. That's from the past. Tim Parker to um, fill that seat. All right, so today, guys, we're going to start off with our roles and responsibilities. And um, Ms. Allen, you have the floor. We're talking roles and responsibilities okay. today of this committee and where we're going to go forward from here out. Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you, first of all, and welcome, everyone. I was asked to put together an outline of our RFP as well as the roles and responsibilities of the insurance committee team that we've assembled as a committee, as well as the evaluation team that some of you may have noticed was in the RFP that was distributed. As you know, on April 7th, we went out to bid on our health insurance, as well as our vision, dental, and life insurance programs. Specifically, uh, the committee was never really totally advised of what their roles and responsibilities were, so we thought we'd backtrack a little bit and talk about what the health insurance committee was brought forward to and what to do regarding that. We handed you out a little RFP that talks about the background and the um, process that has happened at the March 15th Health Insurance Committee. The committee voted for the county to seek proposals on the health insurance program. Even though the committee was advised at that meeting, the turnaround time for an RFP was tight, but we um, felt that we were able to meet those time constraints. So we just need to bear in mind that we had things that we had to keep in mind, the 30 days required for open enrollment, as well as the adequate time to process all the paperwork. So that's important. Your role as a committee member is very important because you will be recommending to the Board of County Commissioners with which health insurance program to select for our employees. Not only which company, but also whether if we're going to go with group health insurance or self-funded health insurance. So if you turn to the third page in the packet, it talks about specifically the two commit the teams. One team is the evaluation team. And the other is the insurance committee. Let me talk about the evaluation team first. The evaluation team is the first group that will be reviewing the RFP responses after the general services staff provides them to us for distribution. The main purpose of the evaluation team is to receive all of the RFPs and then rank them being the ranking criteria that you will find in the RFP packet. Each responder is tasked with providing specific data that will be put in our packets so we'll know what, how to rank them. The evaluation team will be responsible to sort these bids by the specific parts of the RFP 
and uh, from that point they will be moving on with the dental vision and life insurance programs to make a recommendation. The evaluation team will provide a comparison sheet to the health insurance committee and this ranking sheet will just um, stipulate the differences in the, the plans that we receive and hopefully we'll receive more than one but they would make it easier for at a glance. You will also get the ranking sheet if they complied with the certain criteria that they have to submit with their packets. One being, did they attend the mandatory meeting, things of that like. Now the insurance committee has specific um, duties that they have to fulfill. It was formed to review the county's health insurance coverage and programs. The health insurance committee members, which are you, will be receiving the bid responses um, sometime in the afternoon of May 26. That um, the evaluation team will be providing with that packet those ranking sheets we talked about just for you to use a as a guideline. But when you receive them, you'll also have a comparison of the different types of coverages because it's a lot to look at. It'll compare the different co-pays and so forth. So when you receive those, you need to be carefully reviewing that. However, um, you will have until June 5th when we meet for you to make your recommendation as a group and come forward. But something that we hadn't completed that we feel is very important that each member on this committee understands today, some of the roles and responsibilities, and especially the Florida Sunshine Law that you all are all under as an insurance committee member. So as we move forward and we go through our, our duties as committee members, we will be getting that information to you on March or May 26th, but I'd like to call on our county attorney and provide you each with a packet about your roles and responsibilities as committee members on this committee, as well as let Attorney Manning review the Florida Sunshine Laws for you so you understand completely um, what your roles and responsibilities are. And after that, then we'll have a form for you to sign that you received the packet and return it to us. Okay, any questions so far? Good, thank you. No. Mr. Manning? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, what Marjorie is passing out is um, uh, kind of a simple little packet that the county provides to um, members that serve on various uh, committees and boards for the um, Board of County Commissioners. And it, it goes over a, a couple of things. It talks about <coughs> board procedures and proper decorum. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and read through all that. You all can do that yourself. I'll, I'll just hit on a couple of points. Um, although our, our chairman, uh, Chairman Harvey's, and, and the other commissioners are very familiar with this, but um, the way that actions are, are handled by the board in order to take official action, what you're going to have is for one of the members to make a motion a, another member to uh, second that motion and what that does is it brings to the chairman um, uh, a topic for discussion so it's after the motion and the second it would then be open for discussion and at that point um, uh, when the ch when the chairman feels um, the the item has run its its course from a discussion perspective um, then he'll call for a vote and a vote is taken procedurally that's how that is um, handled Uh, the other thing I wanted to, to hit on in, the, in this packet is, is the Sunshine Law. Um, these meetings are open to the uh, Florida Sunshine Act, and what that requires is that any time um, any two or more members of this board have um, any discussion about a topic or an item that could likely come before this board for action, that discussion must be held um, in, a, in an open meeting, such as what we have here. What that means is it has to be open to the public, it has to be advertised, and minutes have to be taken. 
Um, so I would encourage all of you to refrain from any one-on-one -on -one discussions with each other um, about these matters outside of outside of these meetings. Um, and that includes um, using a third person conduit. Uh, you know, uh, one person tells another person this is uh, their position on a matter and that person relays it to another, you know, and back and forth. That is also a violation of the sunshine. We've also found with um, social media, um, we can have sunshine violations through the use of social media such as Facebook. If, if one member of the commission posts an, op an opinion about um, a matter to come before the board um, uh, for action and uh, uh, a, another um, person on, the, on this board is a friend or a friend of a friend and they see that post or even worse yet respond to that post, you can have a sunshine violation in that, in that instance. So again, we would encourage all of you to, to limit your discussions of these matters to to this meeting. Um, and uh, we're going to ask that, that you go ahead and uh, read through this packet. And then there's a separate form that we're going to ask you, all of you to fill out and sign before leaving here um, today. And you can leave that with, with Ann. Is there anybody have any questions on those topics? We don't have to do the, f they don't have to do the financial disclosure. No, form. no, uh -uh. Th that's limited to um, the uh, positions that are listed in there. That's just included in this packet. That's Planning Commission, Zoning Board, and Codes Enforcement Board. As I said, this is kind of a generic packet that we give all the commissions, uh, committees. The other thing I wanted to, to, to point out is that um, according to a couple of Florida statutes, 119.071 and 286113, um, when the bids come in, the, the bids are, going, are confidential by statute until, uh, until the county um, provides, <coughs> excuse me, notice of intent to release the competitive solicitation or um, to, to make a selection. So when the bids come in, um, it, it, they're confidential. So n nobody on this board can legally provide those bids to anybody until, as I said, there is the Board of County Commissioners makes a determination and issues an intent, um, a notice of intent to award the bid. So I just wanted to make that, that clear. Does anybody have any questions about that? So on the 26th, when the, when the email comes to us as an individual member of this committee with a breakdown of the bids and who's, who's doing what and how much and all that case, it's not for public knowledge until the county intends to, to accept the bid or whatever at that point. That's correct, okay. until the county issues a notice of intent. All right. So if there's any public record request of any person on this committee, it should come through you at this point? Is that? Well, that <coughs> we prefer that they come through our office, but we can't require a person making a public record request to, um, to make the request through our office. So I, I, I couldn't tell you um, to, to tell somebody well, no, you need to make that request through the county attorney's office. But certainly, when the request is made, you could pass it on to us, and then we can go ahead and respond um, to that request. Any questions? When do you think that intent will happen after the 26th? Uh, I'll have to leave that up to. I don't think you're on. I can address that. I can address that. Hello, there we go. thought the battery may have passed out on us. A um, couple of things. First of all, our original um, submitting your bid deadline was May 8th, and that has come and gone. We had to extend it because there were questions and we're having a little trouble getting data from our current provider to share um, with the potential bidders. I'll go ahead and sit down. Thank you, sure. sir. Thank you. Mr. Any questions for Mr. Mann? No. All right, Mr. Mann, thank you. 
So the deadline now for them to submit their bids has been changed. I'm trying to get the date here. It's May 24th at 2.30. So what's going to happen on the 24th is general services will do their thing, and that Friday is when we anticipate having the packets assembled. Now, you will get this packet ahead of time, but it's only for your eyes only as a committee member. The ranking sheets will not be coming forward from the evaluation team, which will assist you with some of the where they fall in order by response um, until after the evaluation team meets and passes that on to you, which is the 31st. But you will have the comparison sheets for the different plan designs and cost and all that on the, the criteria sheet that HR will be assembling for you. As far as when that intent goes would be when it goes to the board for award. So at the insurance committee meeting, June 5th is when we'll assemble again, and that's when you're going to be asked, expected to talk about and make a recommendation to the board. And then it will go to the board the following meeting where we would attach the documents that would now be available to make the intent of award at that time, which would be, what's that committee meeting date? The board meeting June 13th. June 13th would be the board meeting at that time. Let's just uh, hypothetically say that the um, sheriff, for example, decides he gets this packet. He looks over him. He would like a presentation by company XYZ. How does he make that request known to you? Very good question. We did talk about having, um, if you, the committee would like to have presentations. And again, we'll know probably a little better when we get our responses in and are able to evaluate. Right now, we have a a good idea of how many responses we'll get, but you know it's never a guarantee. But we did have a mandatory meeting where bidders had to attend in order to submit their bid. So I would under I would think that would be most likely our process that we would like to allow that for the committee to have it. So you should know probably somewhere between that time if you'd like presentations. In fact, I would encourage it. Okay. June fifth. Looks like it's going to be a busy day. So yes, we're sir. We're going to be here probably until we're done June on June 5th. June 1st. Is that correct? He's talking about the committee meeting. Yeah. Yes, um, that would be our intent, or we could have another meeting at some time if needed. Well, we got to, we're going to present to the board by the 13th. So that's the correct. following week. So right. there's not a whole lot more time to, to do at that point. That's right. But um, usually the packets are fully detailed. And if, you know, if it's requested, we'll certainly arrange that. Another thing that I wanted to bring to this committee's attention, and it is in the packet when you have time to read, oftentimes vendors will give an additional discount if the county selects the same vendor for different products like if you take their health insurance you may get a discount on the dental so we'll make sure if that is stated in the bid which we did request that they provide that information that we will pass that on to this committee to make sure you're aware of those things just for the committee's knowledge uh, the committee did instruct the uh, miss allen and her staff to go out for health insurance bids as you well know or might not know they went out for all bids at that mm -hmm. point, but we're only looking at the health insurance side. She'll be taking care of the life, dental, and vision uh, part of it right now. Is that correct? That is correct, and the um, insurance committee voted to look at both group health and self-funded health insurance. Right. So if we get any bids in, they will be separated into five different categories. So that's why we have an evaluation team to help us with that process since there's five different levels. But this committee is focusing on health insurance, which is certainly the biggest um, cost to the county. That's why you had mentioned in your presentation that if a company does want to bundle, per se, and that that's the right word to use, mm -hmm. then um, there could be potential discounts with company A or company D, whatever the case may be. It's something to keep in mind and consider, but I wouldn't you know, say it's the right. end all be all. It might not be overall the, the greatest, but it's not always the lowest cost. We have to do what's in the best interest for our employees. Sometimes they might be just really close, but if you look closely, they might be an added cost to the benefit or a higher copay or something. So that's what the comparison sheet will help you with, okay. if that makes sense. It's a big thing to review. <laughs> all the different facets. 
And you had mentioned to me, am I, well, uh, never mind, I'm not, <laughs> don't <laughs> Well, we're in a public meeting, so we yes, can talk. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned to me that going into the future of this, that you would like to see um, what companies would really offer the county in terms of service and what what you would want to see as the HR director in the form of monthly reports and claim things in that nature. So would you expound on that just a second? I certainly will. Um, it's been my practice to besides it renew a health insurance or dental insurance product, but also enter into an agreement with the vendor that would outline things that were our expectation, like monthly reports. And when we are in a bid process time period, I would expect those reports to continue and not stop just because we're going through a bid period. Um, that happens if you do not have agreements in writing, and certainly we pay an awful lot for our insurance, and I think we need to be getting that data and uh, we are having somewhat of an issue with Florida Blue providing us that data at this time which caused us to have a delay in our RFP process well commissioner I mean committee members I've been doing all the talking so mm -hmm. please uh, feel free to Miss Allen is feeling healthy and up to date and ready mm -hmm. to answer all your questions mr. chairman yes sir and you, you said that, you, if I understood right, you said that you all had already had a mandatory meeting. Can you tell us roughly how many companies or entities showed up? I will defer to our general services director. Um, she has the record that she kept of them. Melissa Dillon. Good question as she's and gathering other, her items. The other question I had while you're looking for that was just what uh, the makeup of the evaluation team. Okay. <coughs> Are you ready? We'll let her go first. Yeah, at the mandatory, is this on? Yes, okay. At the mandatory meeting, we had representation from 14 different health insurance companies, 13 dental, 13 vision, and 11 life. Mr. Davis? Well, wait a minute. I think there was another question on the floor. Excuse me just a moment. Mr. Evaluation team, just yeah, the makeup. The makeup of the evaluation team. Okay, the evaluation team is consisting of our budget officer, acting county administrator, um, Stacy Papel, myself, and then we have uh, Brenda Bridges representing um, their office, and who was the other? Oh, uh, Mike Nimitz from Public Works, who's very familiar with the bid process, and we have not um, determined who the sheriff's office representative is at this time, but we would like to have someone from the sheriff's office representing. Mr. Overture, if that answers your question. Mr. Davis, you have the floor, sir. On the mandatory meeting, was that... Mr. Davis, can you grab a microphone? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's fine. He's asking about the mandatory meeting, if it was an in-person meeting for the... Telephonically appear? Or could they telephonically appear? It was a mandatory meeting, as stipulated in the bid document. I don't believe we received any requests. No, Melissa's shaking her head no. Um, for telephonic, um, I, I we never were asked, but I think... Would you have allowed it? Yes, she would have. Um, but I mean, it was well attended. We had hardly any questions, which was surprising. So um, it went well, and it kind of gives us an idea of what to expect as uh, our responses. As you heard, we had a, a good number. I really enjoy the website. I've been reading the questions on the bid, <laughs> you know, because of its interest to me. Um, and But it was really interesting to see how you're posting all those questions and the responses. So if you haven't had a chance to go see it, go to the website and look at those bid documents and you can pull those up and see the questions. And I provided you the web link on this packet. It's basically the General Services Department's website and then hit on bids and it's RFP 17-16. Any other questions? I do have a question. There was one thing that I noticed on the, uh, the timeline uh, specifically with regard to the online employment module. Uh, it looks as if um, maybe that's something that we need to address as far as moving those dates out because the dates have been moved out for the bid submission. As far as those dates go, um, that was just an internal thing, but that time period is going to pass. It's, we're not going to even have the bids back, so um, that's not a consideration any longer. Uh, we're committed to moving forward, and if we have to do it manually by paper again, 
no problem. We'll do that and catch up later. But it was a time consideration um, initially when we were going through the timeline. There is a lot of paper chase at the <laughs> after the 30-day open enrollment. But we're committed to doing whatever we could do. And, and if we have to resort to the paper chase and paper trail, we'll do it. But that's a very good point. Um, usually that timeline, implementing benefit focus took us almost a year. Um, but we may not be continuing on that program anyway, depending. So, But we do have to have a way to get it into our payroll system timely. And I think working with our IT staff will, will figure that out, even if it's manually updating. Along the sheriff's questioning, uh, wouldn't that also depend upon, let's say that a, a vendor says I can come in here and get this done in a really quick time frame, um, wouldn't that also depend upon them? I mean, I know we're going to set expectations, but they might go, hey, we can bring a whole staff. Because I used to do that in my office. I, we'd get yeah. the whole staff here that morning and knock we things out. We do not allow vendors to enter into our payroll system. Okay. This other system was an online enrollment system, and um, you know all the policies That's are right. loaded up there and all those things. But it's a tool. Um, we, we did many years without it. We can go back another go back to the old drawing board if need be, but this is such an important task. Um, as the committee knows, the cost of insurance has continually creeped up, and um, that's probably for our next discussion when we implement that rate, what happens there. Right. Just to follow up to that as well, it seems reasonable to me that if we do have to go to a paper-based enrollment system, at least for the first year, can we expect in uh, years to come that we can migrate over to an online enrollment system? You mean back to one? Because we have one now. Yes, that would be our desire. And we asked, it, part of the RFP was tell us about your online enrollment system. We may not be able to make the timeline this time around if we have a change in vendor, but we're willing to give it a shot and do everything we can to make it happen. Sure. Even if, But you know, there's factors and the security in our web, so I think all of you know what we face about um, getting our data in and out and through. We want to make sure it's secure. So that's something we have to work with IT on. But um, yeah, the online enrollment, we love the web-based, but <laughs> this year it just might not be practical. Committee? I have a question concerning June 5th. Um, the committee meets that day. I think we're going to meet at 2 o'clock. Is it, Dan, is that correct? Or Okay. Um, yes. We're going to, we're charged that day with the fact of moving something forward <coughs> by the end of the day to the Board of County Commissioners. Um, do we have tally sheets? Do we have ranking sheets that we're going to rank presentations and rank, um, you know, the, the product, if you will, how, how is that going to be handled? Yes, when they're distributed to the, you, they all each have a ranking sheet on, on top. Um, the ranking sheet is, I think, five parts, on the different criteria, five or six, which was um, developed, and it's um, with general services. They have the copy as well as we do, but it's not released because that might give someone an unfair advantage in the um, <laughs> responding time, but we, you will get that ranking sheet, certainly. Well, it's, it's my point is if we have that many people bidding and let's just say 12 of the 14 make it to that process, um, or I don't know how they're going to be ranked, but even if five out of the 14, that's going to be quite a bit of presentations that day. And for this committee to come at the end of the day and recommend one top person or company to, to take over. Um, without a ranking sheet would be difficult, I think. Well, one of the tasks of the evaluation team would to help put some of that in order for you. Okay. And they won't be ranked per se. It's just going to be ranked based on the responses and the, the attachment in here. I think it's attachment C that the criteria that the bidders have to complete. There's a numerous um, questionnaire. Let's see for health insurance, they have 84 questions. Okay. So that'll help you to determine which ones should rise to the top if they agree to something or not. Um, you should be able to put them together. I would recommend maybe bringing back the top three or four um, for presentations. And um, if everybody wants to have a meeting before that to make a 
you know, to see the the presentations if they're necessary, we can do that. The top three or four from self-funded or whichever you feel. Um, usually, if they're going to give you the group, they'll probably give you the self-funded. So it might be the same company. Not always, but it's possible. <laughs> Complicated <laughs> topic. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure you answered it quite the way. I'm um, can I yes, jump in? Um, just for um, perhaps an idea would be that on the June 5th meeting, that's the date, correct, um, that you look at the information from the evaluation team. You've also all had an opportunity to look at the packets, and you can rank during that meeting, and then go ahead and set another date, like two days later, another meeting date where you have presentations if needed. And that way, we can go ahead and notice the meeting ahead of time, presentations if needed. We can also give a heads up to the uh, respondents to save that date in case presentations are needed. And that way, you could use one meeting to uh, talk about the rankings and talk about whether you need further information, and then a second meeting a day or so later to see the actual presentations if you decide you want to go that route. It's a very good comment. Feeling. Committee members, what do you feel about that? You're talking that would be like a June 7th meeting. Monday, June 5th would be, and then we'd follow up with presentations if needed on Wednesday, June 7th. Something like that. Yeah. We could do that. And just remember, we have to notice all these meetings and publish them in the paper. So if we know now that's what you wish to do, we can make that happen. And as Ms. Dillon stated, we'll just put all the vendors on notice that they may need to appear if they're selected to present. So and with that in mind, we might not do, we might not be able to have that recommendation on June 5th. It might come on June 7th. That's The final correct. recommendation. Of course, that would make for a late published that's agenda. What, that's what I was going at, yeah. <laughs> but you know, um, this is an important topic, so late published agendas are what's what we're gonna have to deal with at that time I mean it's not like we want to be late we're trying to be good <laughs> stewards and trying to be frugal and trying to be thorough and if it takes that's the next day putting the agenda out then it takes the next day putting the agenda up. or we can amend the agenda if the agenda's up by Friday it's up over the whole weekend anyway well the, the you know what I, I would prefer that we already have the agenda and we amend it because the commissioners do need more time than just a few days so that would just be one piece that we could add in to an already published agenda, in my opinion. Committee members, anything? I agree. Or you can have a placeholder agenda item. There you go, there you go. With no backup material, and the addendum can just be the backup material to the placeholder. Yeah, good, good alternative on that. Well. awfully quiet so Charles any question mr. Overture I, I mean I think we need to go ahead if, if we think that's the, the way to go ahead and set the seventh and, and you know it just seems prudent to have everybody that at least on notice okay we may meet that day we may all feel like we all know the, the best candidate and uh, you know that kind of thing and can meet on the that Monday and decide but if we need the, t the Wednesday I think we ought to go ahead and do that okay miss Bridges I agree ma'am Commissioner Lattle. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Chair? Yes, I agree. Mr. Tenney? Agree, yep. Agree. Agree. I agree. All right. So would you like to keep it at 2 o'clock? Yeah. Let's keep it uniform. And we'll keep all the meeting dates at 2, you know. Although I'm sharper at 9 or at 5 <laughs> in the morning, but... <laughs> Five would be great. <laughs> Some of the um, proposed bidders are out of the area, so they probably would appreciate an afternoon presentation time slot. I'm, I'm sure. All right, let's bring this in for landing because it doesn't seem like we have a lot more questions. Have all the questions been answered to your satisfaction, committee members? I have a question. Please do, Ms. Bridges. Um, you this have the floor. Is regarding the um, open enrollment sessions for the employees. I know typically we have about five dates with a couple of sessions on each date. And if we are um, 
going to be changing plans. I'm sure employees are going to have a lot more questions. Have there been any more consideration to add in? I know it's extra work for HR, but additional sessions because even on a normal year, employees come back, they're confused, they have a lot of questions. So I think this year is going to even be um, more so than, than the typical year. Has there been any consideration for that? Well, as you all know, um, Section 125 of the IRS Code requires that we have a 30-day open enrollment period, and any time the employees can come to HR for questions or guidance. We just hold those sessions, um, but we can expand it no problem. It's just usually they're not well attended, <laughs> but we'll be happy to accommodate and do whatever we need to do, certainly. And um, normally we've been trying to have open enrollment in July. We're going to have to push that back. Because remember, payroll deductions for the benefits are a month in advance. So any change for October 1 has to start September 1. But um, we'll just do the best we can with what we have to work with. Um, I think the bigger picture here is making sure we have adequate coverage at a good cost. Yeah. But yes, we can do that. I think was it last year we had them go into they go to every department anyway, and all the constitutionals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had them go out to the different yeah, constitutionals. Department tax collector and all the sheriff's office and we certainly can do that yeah. and that's another reason why we stipulated that in the packet that you know we require them to be on site at our open enrollment sessions the vendor yeah, I think most employees are typically just a little bit confused because there's so many people in the number of sessions that occur and so a lot of them are hold back on some of those questions so I think if we can offer a little bit more, they'll be more prone to, to get their questions uh, to you. And I know our office makes those meetings mandatory for our staff. Mm -hmm. And that's what was really nice about our online enrollment system. They could go through it at their leisure and you know review and do a comparison. So we're hoping that we'll have a solution as similar if it changes to a different vendor to provide that round the clock time where they can access the information but we'll certainly do whatever we it takes okay. but we do one-on-one -on -one sessions every year during open enrollment thank you you're welcome yes Commissioner Lavo if we could back up just a little bit uh, mrs. Allen the expansion of the deadline what was the the, the reasonings behind that again I can't remember we didn't spend much time on that. Sure. So. Um, we had requests for information that we were having difficulty getting from Florida Blue. We did receive some of that, but the details of the information, let's say, for example, the claims data, um, we're just getting numbers. And I think what some of the bidders were looking for is a little more details. We got the top 50 types of, in, or, um, what's the word, illnesses. Oh, Ms. Papel would like to say something as well. Florida Blue claimed that the information they provided us met the statutory requirements. We asked for more detailed information from Florida Blue because some of the bidders wanted more detailed information. Um, they refused to comply. They said they met all legal requirements and the information that they had to give and held firm with that statement. So in your opinion then, do you think that the bidders, 100% of them, are satisfied with the information they were requesting? Did they get exactly what they wanted? No, they didn't get what they wanted, but they got what was required by Florida State statute. Hmm. Just a, a quick follow-up to that. Uh, you said that they had gotten uh, a portion of the data, which was uh, maybe summary data, were, were they provided with, de or were we provided previously as a county with detailed claims information previously prior no. to us going out to RFPs? No, sir. Okay. Does that put <coughs> Florida, uh, Florida Blue at a somewhat of an advantage then? My opinion? <laughs> yes. I think you should all consider that when we we um, consider renewing or awarding. It may. It may be a, a, a fine factor, but you know the also the other thing to consider is um, going forward. I am requesting that we negotiate a contract with whomever 
is awarded the bid that this doesn't happen again in the future, that we have set goals and directives of what any of our vendors will provide to us, which we haven't done in the past. So that's something that I would like assurances on, that we'll receive detailed claims data if we request it, that we'll get monthly reports if we request it, things like that. There's no way to say whether uh, the detailed, more detailed information would have driven bids that we haven't not that we have not yet received up or down. I mean that's that's fortune telling, but it may. Thank you. The the amount of information that we did receive statutorily, who made that call on if it met the statutes, exceeded it, or came under it? I mean, how do we know? Our county attorney felt that it did, and Florida Blue's attorneys felt that it did. So they were talking? Yes. Okay, so you pushed them as far as you think you could push them? Oh, yes. Um, it's it, What the data was that was submitted that we requested, it's um, basically numbers and dollars. And I reviewed some other bids in the area. Recently, Flagler County was awarded um, their RFP to Florida Blue, and the same data was submitted. Um, some others, Alachua County, the same detail and claims data was the same. So it has a different name on the title of the, the document, but it's the claims data, how many claims hit each month and the dollar value. But yes, I feel that we've received the best we can at this time. But again, going into the future, you'd like to see uh, us have contracts with our partners, if you will that will say these are the reports we want. So when, if this ever comes back up, we will be able to produce not only statutory data, but we'll have over and above the data that we need to provide a possible relief in the health insurance market. Correct, and I think um, when we manage our contracts, we should be able to request reports and data of the claims data and what's driving our costs either up or down, and at this time we have not been getting those details. The only details we get when we have a health fair, the number of participants and you know the questionnaires, we don't get details, but we get how many respondents and you know the how many were males, how many were females, that kind of demographic type of data. And of course there are HIPAA laws, but um, we should still know like how many diabetic cases we have, and we do get some disease management totals which were shared, but I think what, what was requested was more fine-tuned details. Not how, you know how many times did someone go to a primary doctor, how many went to a specialist, but while they were there, what did they get? Right now we're just getting that so many went to primary, so many went to specialist, but we, they, what that was requested was more details. While they were there, they had this, this, and this done. Well, it's kind of like a, it's a utilization. I drove my car 14 times this month, but I'm not going to tell you how many times I broke down and what I, when I broke down what I needed to do to fix my car. Very good and analogy, yes. Yeah, that's what we dealt with. So you just, they just wanted more drill down information, couldn't get it, but we did the best we could, and that's where we're at right that's now. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Lyle, that was a great question. That was good. Okay, don't forget, before you walk out of here, they're going to come by and grab these from you, so if you'll take a moment, fill your paperwork out. Um. Also, Ms. Holland, just a quick follow-up to a, a statement that you made earlier about requesting a representative from the Sheriff's Office yes, sir. to serve on the evaluation committee. I'm prepared to name that person now if you'd like. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, at first, we were trying to um, withhold people on this committee or their alternate, but um, we had one you know, that wasn't able to attend. So if it's your backup, we were trying not to do that, but it's fine with us if you would like to name no, someone no. now. My alternate for this committee is actually uh, Colonel Joe Wells. Uh, we'll name uh, Captain Hansel Woods as the designee from the Sheriff's Office okay. for the evaluation team. Yep. Very good. What do we all feel about Brenda Bridges? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pull that mic. Close to you. Who did you just say your name and Hansel Woods? Okay, he's not as loud. I, Brandon, I don't think that microphone is as hot as the rest of them uh, well, it over here. Way away from it. It was pretty yeah. far away from me. <laughs> yeah, but I can be over here. And <laughs>
This is the best this system's ever it been. It really is. It is. And guys, we have a new, everything's new video. So it is really, Bob, thank you. I watched them the other day. You guys did it. I didn't do it. And let me tell you another thing that I'm really impressed with that it wasn't, I think it was the same day these videos started hitting um, the internet. So there's no, there's no reason not to see what we're doing publicly anymore. Bob, no, no complaints. congratulations. Thank, Thank you so much. You are too. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, Miss Allen, I guess before you, why don't you make your rounds and pick them all up? And uh, then we'll adjourn the meeting after I, they're picked If up. I could, just one other thing. Um, HR is not on this committee, so if as a committee member you have questions or you need somebody to walk you through these things, you can contact us or you may contact Ms. Dillon regarding the bid documents. Everything's uploaded on her website, but you are allowed to talk to HR, it's just committee members. But yeah. HR is not on the committee, because I know it's a lot. <laughs> Just can't talk to committee members and That's we can't right. talk to prospective vendors. Correct. There is a blackout period, so if they've contacted you, we can't And talk once to they them. get that packet, they can't divulge it or share it with anyone until the time comes. Right. So there is some rules placed on yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other business to come before this committee? Seeing none, this committee will stand. Mr. Overgriff, do you have something? Okay. This committee will stand adjourned. Thank you.